presentation on CDs, which they'll show us. Uh, that'll be our second talk. Our first uh, speaker this afternoon is uh, Professor Peter Drawer, a nuclear physicist whom I know that you all know and I've just met for the first time. Uh, he will be speaking to us on a fascinating topic, particularly uh, given what we're discussing here about creation and what it may mean. Uh, he told me that the theme is that matter is not matter. So if we think about the fact that we're talking about creation in the material world and we don't have matter, this should be quite interesting for us. Um, and he said that this is a critical linkage to religion and symbolism. So, And he brought an experiment with us to see this. So without uh, any further ado, Peter, could you take the uh, podium for us? Unless you, you can, unless you want to speak here. Okay. I'll take the here too if you want. Okay. Okay. Yes, there's a timer up there you push. Well, I'm a real stranger here because I'm a nuclear physicist and uh, got my PhD with Edward Teller, the father of the H-bomb. Don't, don't believe that I ever built an H-bomb <coughs> because I went to uh, Edward Teller because he was a student of Werner Heisenberg, who was actually the founder of the, the, of the, new, uh, of the new physics. And I want to, in a way, talk to you about uh, you know, what is the relationship between living and non-living? And <clears throat> this is particularly uh, interesting because if you look at this new physics, <clears throat> you find it was considered very paradoxical in the 1925. So it's not, we call it modern physics, but it's 80 years old, right? It was very strange. It was due to Heisenberg and Bohr who gave it different interpretation and found out that indeed, I mean, this kind of view of the physics it gave the chance to build a bridge actually between science and religion. Not in the sense, you know, that it forces religion into the language of the physicist, but just the other way around. That physics, you know, <coughs> physicists in, in particular, nuclear physics, or as I call myself, elemental particle physicists, we were the people who said, we know exactly what's right and wrong because it's the exact sciences. And then it turned out that this is not the case because <coughs> it cannot be explained. We're now in the same boat as a theologian that they have to talk about something which they cannot really express in our language. But you have to, in a way, go their way and then feel your way into that and realize that it's a very interesting and bigger world which is actually behind. <clears throat> now, um, you know, this actually was under the name of climate change, so I was surprised that I would put into climate change, not that I think it is very important as it was demonstrated here that climate change is important. It's actually a subject matter I'm working with 35 years, and I'm always surprised that we have to repeat that, what has been done 35 years ago. But <clears throat> as it was stated here, you know, the climate change is very important, but it's an indication of something which is behind, which is much more complicated. But it's a good way for us to get familiar that we have to work together to solve the problem. And it is not that only one starts we have to get all the people in order to, to go the same way. <clears throat> but <clears throat> the, 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 the general problem behind is actually that we are violating a, bi a, a, a balance of the geobiosphere by being humans and having a great impact on that. And that is in a way rather new that um, this is the case that the biosystem comes in in the language of a physicist. This is really, uh, <coughs> this is really new. <coughs> Now, I will not talk very much about, you know, the new physics, but a little bit I have to tell you about it because it is so fundamentally revolutionary different and only very few people are talking about it, including the physicists themselves. But they say, you can't understand it anyhow, so why should we learn it? But they use it. And this puts us in the present in a very strange situation. It's a kind of a schizophrenic situation that we still have the mind of the 19th century, right, in sciences. 
Yes, we have a technology <coughs> which you only can understand if you knew, if, if you use the new physics, microelectronics, the new chemistry, and, and unfortunately also the atomic bomb is only possible if you use the other physics. So we have that in our, in, in our technology, but we continue thinking in the old, with the old mind. <coughs> so not really taking care of what has been found out at that time. <coughs> and <coughs> this is, in a, in a way, welcome that we get into this kind of a situation. And, but <coughs> we have to realize that it has to do with the value system. The value system which we use at the present time is actually a value system which is dictated by the value system of economics. Still, people in economics, they still use, so to say, also, that there is an addition, you know, something like religion or more general ethics and, 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 and morality and, and, and such a thing. But if you talk to, 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 uh, to scientists, it's more or less a smokescreen, you know. They, they believe in their by way of explaining everything, and they couldn't allow, you know, putting in something very nebulous, which we cannot really define. <clears throat> so, um, but we do realize that the trouble we are in at the moment has to do that sustainability, what we want to have for the future, only succeeds if you go back to the genuine values, and this includes ethics and morality. But it will turn out that this ethics and morality in modern physics, it is not something you have to add because you have learned it by history, you know there is something in the background, but the interesting part is that it fits in this new language. And that I want to talk a little bit about it, because it also gives you the explanation what the difference is between non-living and living matter. It is actually, they are basically very close, but they are in a different configuration. But they are closely, they are actually basically the same. Even I cannot say basically because the basis is not the right language. <coughs> so we have in this way to learn to think in a different way. We already know that be because uh, with a Russell Einstein manifesto, which said when the, uh, the hydrogen bomb, I mean, uh, exploded, uh, Einstein said, here, either human, the human humanity has a chance or we have to get rid of war. Because, I mean, with these weapons, which are a billion times bigger than the chemical weapons, right? It is impossible that we can keep that we have to get rid of it. And here, in, in, in Einstein's Hunter's birthday, uh, we, no, not birthday, he, of his inventions, uh, I wrote on with, with two friends, uh, a Potsdamer manifest in a way indicating there's not only the atomic bomb which puts us into trouble, but all the things we are talking about here are actual trouble which we have to resolve in some particular way. Now, we already know from our experience that we can say, we experience more than we can grasp. And of course, everybody says yes. But if you say you can experience more than what you grasp, you actually mean that what you experience and not grasp, you still have to study to get an explanation later on. And the new physics shows this is not the case. There are things you can only experience, but you cannot explain in our language. Our language is too limited. Now, we do already know when we think about uh, talking about uh, reality or in German wirklichkeit, I haven't found a good word in English which translates Wirklichkeit, which has been introduced by Meister Eckhart in the 14th century. It, wirklichkeit is something which is changing all the time. It is not something you can grasp, right? Changing all the time. That when we are, have a faith, you know, uh, uh, and, and have religion and so on, we are in the left circle, right? We cannot really grasp it, but we know there is something in the background. But we can express it in a language, but not in terms of nouns, but rather in, in verbs, you know, that we say living, uh, uh, loving, uh, being aware, hoping, and so on. That are all things where we, we, we do understand, but we explain it to me. Explain it to me when you say, I fell in love. 
uh, what is love? I think I can't explain it. In the moment I put it in my fist, it's gone, right? So you have to be careful that you believe that everything which is on the left-hand side you can transport into knowledge at the end. And that's the reason what the physicists know, the scientists believe. We empty the left side and fill the right hand. And if we are there, then we can really govern the world and can, can you know, manip manipulate as we want. And the outcome will be, no, it's not the case. Actually, the right hand side doesn't really exist. If you look very closely, we are always on the other side, but not in an arbitrary way, but in a very, very strange way that certain things are fixed and others are completely open. Now, this has a lot to do with that that the difference between Wirklichkeit, something which is changing all the time, is very different to that what we call reality. Because Wirklichkeit just says there is a relationship and you do not say what is A and B, just a relationship, you know? <clears throat> and so there's a subject and an object. But in order to do science, it is not necessary only to say, here's a subject, the observer, and the object is that what is observed, and we put it away. We do something in a different, that the subject, the object, we isolate, we cut off from the subject, if you do science, right? We cut it. And then an object isolated, we call a thing, in Latin that's rest and that's reality. So, by, you, by using science, you are in a world of reality. You believe you can match, you can put Wirklichkeit in the form of reality. And that is not the case. It's a kind of a castration. You lose something by cutting through. And exactly what you cut through is that what we call spirituality or love or whatever you, you want to do it, which has, uh, which, which, has, uh, 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 which has religious interpretation but doesn't appear there, right? But we believe at the moment that if I'm a biologist, I can in a way ex um, explain the living from the, from the dead. They want to imitate the physicist of the 19th century, which is not living and believed having something very complicated, you can't get it together. But you'll find out by cutting the subject from the object, you have actually lost the connection which you actually need to explain the living one. And it doesn't help if you introduce interaction, like electromagnetic interaction, some material language in order to fit what you have cut uh, in, in this case. Now, Let's talk about the world we see. You know, the world we see, the world we see, the world is that what the human being is seeing. That is the universe seen through our eyes, and we know it is very limited. We, have, we only see the light in the light, which is, has its frequencies and so on, right? That is what, what, what we do. But we, we, we do even see less, you know? If we look at it, we actually only see the one which I'm already familiar with it, and then I keep that in mind. And if you go with somebody in the forest and you uh, and it exchange what the other one has seen, you see, you have seen different things. That is, we select only things we are already familiar with it, right? And even that is not the case. If it's familiar, we change it in such a way that it comes closer to our expectation. So what we actually then say, I have seen that, that is not only a, a projection, a part of, 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 of the reality, but it is also, in a way, uh, manipulated in a way. I mean, who has seen the black spot in his eyes, you know? <clears throat> we have the black spot in his eyes. But I mean, the, our brain says, oh, they are scared about such a black spot. So they, they, they paint it over, and nobody has seen his, 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 uh, the, the black spot in his eye. So we have to be very careful with that, what we see. And, <clears throat> and, and, and of course, in, uh, in, uh, yeah. And, and this small differences, is, you know, we, how in a way we suppress certain things lead to a completely different point of view of the world. For example, look at this lady here. There's a picture. You see a young girl or you see an old woman. This depends on how you are expecting it to see it. I always see the young girl because, uh, you know, I have not many uh, old women around me. <coughs> so. That is, the small differences in there leads to completely different cultures because they build it up, the whole thing, putting things together in such a way that they are satisfied and have an explanation. <coughs> now, 
I want to indicate to you that there is a big difference from our point of view between the non-living and the living. The non-living, they are in a way disconnected. There's A and B and so on, right? They're disconnected. In an, and in the non-living world, there is one important law, which we never learn in school, but which is the most important law, which says um, in the future, the more likely happens more likely. Goodness, is that a law? I mean, it's just, it is just uh, repeating. No, it's not. If you apply it, it means that it is tendencies that all the system always have a ten tendency to become disordered and never the other way around. Look at your, your desk. In the morning, it's nicely, tightly there. And then you work already at noon time, it gets half a mess, but in the evening, it's a full mess, right? And it's never going the other way that you start with a full mess desk and at the end, you know, it is order. Yes, because the disordered system is statistically much more likely, much more likely. And in fact, if it's really disordered your desk, you can go around for another hour, you cannot get it more disordered. And that we call the ground state, the thermodynamical ground state, that where suddenly I get something which doesn't change, it's completely disordered. But the ordered one is actually bad. Now, uh, quite differently, the living, is, 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 is functioning in a different way. It's a very complex system. And we observe there is a tendency from a living thing to become more complicated, no, become, so to say, more ordered. That we have three and a half billion years here of the de development of life. It was a, a chemical soup. And in, in this short time, three and a half billion years, we have a human being. Statistically, it is absolutely impossible, absolutely impossible. We have zero, zero, zero uh, 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 probability to exist. So why is that, that it goes the opposite way? That the, 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 that the unlikely, the unlikely in the future is not unlikely, and that is what actually happens, right? We, have to, we do not really understand it. We only know. You need an ordering hand because you can clean up your desk, you know? You need an ordering hand. But then you have to, uh, and it needs energy, and that is the reason why the energy comes in, 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 the, in the living thing, to go uphill instead of downhill, going uphill. In, so you, you, you need an ordering hand. An ordering hand has an energy which is ordered, so you can make a motion with the hands which is, which is so to say, uh, precise. I mean, if you try to, to get your, your desk cleaned up like this here, you take something in, you never can do it. But even if you make exact motions like that, you do not do get to the result. You have to look at the paper, you have to look at it done right, and done left. Only then you can get back to the other one. This decision at one point that I either go, I look at it and go right, right and left. This I cannot explain in physics, right? They can only say, make an odd motion. But the, the, what's behind the, 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 the logic, the logistic, you cannot really explain. <clears throat> so this is the reason, the old picture, you know, the non-living is very clear that matter is for them the starting point. What is, and number two, is how it behaves, how it moves, and all this kind of thing. So, the, the one, the matter is the starting point. Uh, you can ask what exists, and the rest is, has to do with other attributes in this way. <laughs> now, this is, this is the old world, and you can see it fits very well to that what Edward Wilson actually said in wonderful book, the unity of knowledge and so on. And there he has an interesting uh, statement. Without instruments, humans are trapped in a cognitive prison, right? And then he says, uh, like intelligent uh, fish wandering about the world and all that kind of thing, and the stars in the sky and the meaning of their existence. And 
but they are wrong, always wrong, because the world is too remote from ordinary experience to be merely, merely experience, uh, uh, imagined, right? Now, this guy is really right, but he believes he's not in the prison. He said, only we who are not looking to a mic microscope or, or, or something else, another instrument, we are in a prison. And finally, he is not in the prison because it is very complicated. The answer will it have been, yes, he is also in a prison, but a different one. And some of, of, uh, some of us say he's even in a smaller prison than we were originally, when we were looking at things around us and, you know, see the world actually straight and also from the side. Here, you just have your eyes always fixed on some instrumentation. So, this is actually what is coming in the modern physics. And I have quickly to say, what are the important results of the modern physics without getting into, into details, because that would take too much time. We're, in we're, the modern we're, physics... We're, we're, just, we're, we're close to 20. Pardon me? I just want to remind you, we're close to 20 minutes. So yeah, can, yeah, but I mean, I have first to say, and then I have to get to, back to the human being, you know? We have a lot of human beings yeah. who have to go. No, go ahead. But go. now, I mean, comes the important part, right? Because in that you see that in this case, now it just turns around, you know? It, it comes out that the world is not reality anymore, but we call it potentiality. Something, it is open, it is, it has, it is immaterial, the matter disappears, it is holistic, there are no separation, everything is connected with everything. We use a wave picture for that, and the future is open. The future is open that is not determined. So, with the knowledge of the present, we cannot predict the future in this case. But this is very important, and this is always our language we use. We want to explain it, because we believe there is a causality, if I've understood it now, it is also true in the future. <coughs> So, and I will not go then because, I mean, um, uh, I, I don't have the time, but it is of, actually, it is the most exciting thing you can imagine. It actually takes away our hope that we ever can manage you, the, the world around us. But the world, what it is, it is created at each moment anew. So, so to say, you don't have only a big bang at the beginning, but it's banging all the time. And you have, in a way, a picture, if you use, I mean, the, the theological language, it means that the, um, uh, 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 that the, uh, the, the creator and the creation are the same, because it is only oneness, and you cannot separate it. And the creation is going on all the time. <coughs> now, <coughs> uh, the question is, and that is now the important question, that everybody says, why should I worry about what a physicist on the micro level finds out? Something which has an open future, not, uh, not arbitrarily open. It has certain tendencies, but it is not fixed, yeah? So, it looks more like something alike, like life. It is not dead. What is the dead thing disappears because it becomes creative out of, of no matter, there comes energy, so matter is not conserved and so on. So this looks very much alike, like, uh, uh, like living things. So you could say, life is not only on our level, but is built in. It is only the in-between, what is important in this case, <coughs> right? Now, you can ask the question, now, why should it matter what happens down there? Well, in my world, I mean, I find I'm actually satisfied with the old physics. That's all we need, right? I call it an apple, apple plugging language. It is very, very good to find food with which you survive. But it is not good to, to explain the universe or, or anything of that kind. So, that is for you, I mean, with, uh, with, uh, with, with the theology. Don't believe that our language will be good enough to give a set for us satisfying answer. We don't have, to, we have the same trouble now. So we join the trouble and be happy with about it. <coughs> now, the important part is that if you take that background and average over it, you get exactly the old physics. So if the physics or the world in which we are is a kind of an averaged out thing. 
So we do not talk about the individual, but about the human being, you know, and the human being is not very spiritual anymore, right? It is just good for, for the economics to tell uh, whether you will buy a car or not, right? So the, the old physics comes back, but only if I don't ask questions, which I connect actually with that. Now, the oh, question we, is, we, we not an important finish. experiment. We have, we have uh, two, are you going to do the experiment after yes, this? Yes, now the experiment. Okay, good. Let's do it and watch it. I mean, it, I don't know why we should be so hurried, because it is a very important change I have not heard here. Right? I have talked uh, uh, in, in Greenland about it, and people were very surprised that have never heard about it, that it's 80 years old. And I want just to give it to you. I mean, because it's easier for you also to connect, actually, relations with each other and also science and that. Now, this is now the experiment I made. <coughs> that is the following. How come that the life down there comes on our level? of experience in our big, big, big life, you know, how I need an, a, 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 a magnifying, a magnifying a, a process, and I have the feeling that it's something very complicated. It's not, because I have here, I talk loud, <coughs> The more I put it in the, in the, in, uh, on top, it discovers, so to say, what is happening in the whole world. In this case, it is now connecting with the life down there, and it looks alive, right? But it never comes up to that. <coughs> so it is only once it can say, here I am free, you know, and here I am free. <coughs> and, uh, but in the moment it's down there, it's gone. Now, I can make it even more sensitive if I pull out two needles which I put in here, and I have now a triple pendulum. A pendulum, a pendulum, a pendulum, right? If I start this one here, then they call it a chaos pendulum. You cannot calculate what they eat, because there are always things where one is on top and then it doesn't decide. And a small thing, actually, uh, it is important in this case, right? So, now you have an example that also you have the old physics, you they call it chaos pendulum, and in our physics it touches what is back in the background, the other physics, which I have no time to explain it. Now you say, this is coming very close to life, but could I, in a way, make this lasting a little longer? You know, after a few minutes it's dead, you know? That means, I mean, now the laws come and tell us that it's, it's friction and all that. Now, I need more than one in order to indicate that in this way you can also get something which lasts longer. And I, I need more than one pendulum in this case, right? And I don't have it alone. But I am standing here. I'm one of the pendulum, it is there. Have you ever thought about why we, we have two feet and not three feet? It would be much more stable. It's not so exciting, you know? I mean, this is a wonderful <laughs> experience, you know? When you say, oh, I don't know. I just decide in, in which way I go, and the natural laws cannot help me, right? And the other leg has the same fantasy, the vision. And, but they say they like, both lie on the ground at the, at the end. They say, oh, it's too bad, you know? It was so wonderful. And then they get the idea, couldn't we cooperate with each other? If I fall, I go with the other one in front and he fall here and I walk and I walk and I walk, right? And in this way, I have a new way of motion each leg cannot do. 
So you have here a very important picture, and then I, I will finish with that a very important picture. <coughs> that if you have two instable, instable situation, and you find a logistic that they cooperate with each other, you open a new dimension in this case, walking without, without falling. But I have forgotten to say, if I walk like this here, it's not fall, 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 but at each time I have a little in energy because my leg in front is there, I have to stretch it. You have to feed it with energy. So the energy has nothing to do with the experience you get of this other field around, you know, which in a way is, you know, it is exactly that what we would call spiritual or, or, or love or something. I, I prefer love actually because the spiritual is still reminding me of my head and the love is, is in a way reminding me it's coming from something else. This is in the background. It is connecting us all. It is connecting us all and that in a way can survive when they cooperate. So the important part what comes out here. Life is possible if, if you have di uh, diversity. Diversity is important. The same thing, if, I, if both legs do the same thing, it doesn't help you at all. They have to be different. But then they have to learn to cooperate, to integrate, to get a game where they are one level higher in the evolution, right? And this being repeated, it leads us to life. That's the reason why we should, in a way, get this situation being up there, you know? People hate that because it's a position when you say, oh, I don't know anything anymore. At that moment, you are up there. There are you, you are really, you are created in this way. If you say, I already know what I do, I'm always down there, right? So the spiritual comp component, I feel, if I get, if I have no uh, anxiety, I have get to, to be afraid of it. To get into that, that like, like getting on a bicycle. <clears throat> At first it looks very courageous to do it, but after you have done it, <clears throat> I do it with my, with my grandchildren, <clears throat> and of course they do fall, and get a bloody knee and then say, uh, cry, and then say, Opa, again, you know? Because after we have discovered that, that if you are on something instable, but you have the possibility of balance, and here the balance comes in. The balance comes in. You open a new dimension. And that is what I find very important, where we can integrate, actually, what all the philosophies and, 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 and also uh, uh, religions do, that, that they, they are connected with this world. And now, I don't say you have to learn physics now, right? But only to say, this is my, access to that. You don't have to go that way because if I talk to my wife, she always says, well, you make so much noise about that, you know, everything is connected, it's obvious, yeah? Yeah, for many people it's not obvious, you know, that you're connected and not by forces like electromagnetic and so on. It is something which is instantaneous. It means that you are something which is not locate, located here, but we are spread out the whole universe. And so, if we are sensi sensitive enough, I can feel somebody in New York here in Moscow on the other side. I don't know whether the, the direction is correct. It's just the opposite way around. That is, now also, uh, let me let me state some encouragement for that, what we were yesterday a bit on the bit. How, that's, that's how can we hope to be optimistic optimistic to change something. This has two different reasons why I'm optimistic, not that I'm thinking very sharply, right? The one is that I have not personally to persuade six and a half billion people to say what is the right way, but it is sufficient to remind them what they have learned in the three and a half billion years, which is behind them, number one. The second one, that the Tibetan wisdom, wonderful, which says, a falling tree makes more noise than a growing forest. A falling tree makes more noise than a, fall, and then a growing forest. Our history is the history of the falling trees. And we're wondering why you're still alive with all the destruction, everything going down, right? 
because it was not really the important one. The important one is a growing forest, and that is the one which slowly, 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 like a healing process, is in a way adding to that. And by the way, historically, who is actually the growing forest? They were our own women. They don't, didn't have time to say what heroes they were in what battle, right? But they are they actually added to that to it that we are still alive. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Jorah.